In the second season of Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay visited an interesting restaurant in West Nyack, New York. This place not only served stale food, but kept expired produce and had an owner who could care less about changing. So, as a little side note, if you're unfamiliar with the geography of New York, West Nyack is situated along the Hudson River, just north of New York City. And well, this place is home to Fiesta Sunrise, a Mexican restaurant operated by a family of three. It consisted of Vic, Patty, and Yolanda Flores. At the beginning of this episode, viewers come to understand that Vic and Yolanda Flores asked their daughter to use all of her savings to open up the business. Instead of simply using their own money, they put the responsibility on Patty since they didn't have much money saved up themselves. Now, before we get into the smaller details, first let's try to understand the relationship between these three family members. First off, Vic isn't Patty's biological father. Yolanda married Vic after she split from her ex, who was Patty's genuine dad. With that detail out of the way, it's important that we point out that this family wasn't new to the restaurant industry, which is pretty rare. They had previously run a restaurant called Fiesta Garibaldi, which was a Mexican eatery that failed quickly. However, the couple hoped to give it another try, but they didn't have the capital to do so. So, if you were wondering, that's why they decided to ask Patty for a loan. But, funnily enough, despite the fact that Patty was officially the restaurant's owner, Vic controlled everything. I'm 100% owner on paper, but my stepfather Vic controls everything. Yolanda even pointed out that Vic never listened to the recommendations her and her daughter made. He ran the restaurant in whatever way he saw fit. He didn't listen to me, he didn't listen to my daughter. Of course, this not only burdened their relationships, but their financial situation as well. Thanks to the terrible interior design and the awful clutter, Fiesta Sunrise struggled to succeed. And to make things even worse, Vic dismissed Yolanda and Patty's request to remodel the restaurant. Given the fact that Vic and Yolanda had prior restaurant experience, Patty saw this as a significant opportunity. But it was a complete mess from the start and was a liability to everyone. I thought this was a big opportunity. From day one, it turned out to be a disaster. Admittedly, the restaurant did pretty well for the first few months, but that didn't last very long. Initially, we were busy, and then after a while, it just the numbers started dwindling. When both Yolanda and Patty asked to make changes to the menu and improve the situation, Vic completely shut them down. He claimed that people preferred the status quo, even though they weren't making any money. So I said, maybe we should make some changes. And he said, everything's fine. I've been thinking of changing the menu, but my husband say people like it. Who the hell does this guy think he is? Anyway, with the rising tensions, both Vic's marriage and the restaurant were in jeopardy. What's more, Yolanda felt pretty guilty since this was affecting Patty's marriage as well. She has a problem in her marriage. I, I just feel very guilty that I put Patty in uh, this position. Since Yolanda seemed to prioritize her husband over her daughter, Patty grew to resent her. I think she put her husband before me, and it's hurtful. Let's just put this into perspective. Patty was robbed of thousands of dollars and doesn't even have a say in how things play out. Doesn't that just anger you? Later on, when Chef Ramsay arrived at the place, he was so confused to see two signs outside the restaurant. There's the sign, but Grill 303. What the f is that? In a face palming moment, he's told that the second sign belongs to the restaurant that previously occupied the building. Why wouldn't they get rid of that? Well, he learned that their logo hasn't actually changed since the restaurant was formerly known as Grill 303. We don't change the, the little logo in the front. You haven't changed the logo on the front? No. This brings up a very valid question. So, how exactly are customers supposed to find Fiesta Sunrise if they're using the old business's logo? It only makes the place seem like it isn't even open yet. Anyway, at the entrance of the restaurant, Ramsay is given a complimentary margarita. This is a new uh, favorite of margarita we have in here. So it's complimentary? Complimentary, exactly. Wow. While he considered this to be a unique way to greet guests, he thought it was way too strong. It's too strong? Mm. So, this wasn't exactly the kind of welcome he was expecting, but he hoped the food would be better. Hungry, Chef Ramsay placed an order for the combination plate, which is a sampler dish. Yeah, I'll try one of the fajitas as well. Okay. He observed that there was only one other table eating in the restaurant as he placed his order. But wait, what was stuck on the front of his menu? Is that a sticker? Looks like I've got a sticker on my menu. Just trying to peel it off and it's bugging me. Chef Ramsay ripped the sticker off and BAM! Fiesta Garibaldi. My another restaurant that, that I used to have, Fiesta Garibaldi. They're reusing their failed menu. When Chef Ramsay confronted Vic about this, Vic expressed that the menu was good, so he didn't want to change it. Old menus from the old restaurant into the new restaurant from the attack. But he also kept the same chef and recipes, so this was really just a duplicate of his past business. Same chef? Same chef. Same ingredients? 
Saint Greens. Predictably, when the famous chef's food arrived, he was extremely disappointed. Yeah, it's hard to see that. It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. The chicken in his tortilla was dry, the beef was disgusting, and the rice tasted awful. The chicken's so dry. The beef. Mm. It's impossible to swallow. How old is the rice? It looks like it's left over from Christmas. Absolutely dreadful. Chef Ramsay headed to the kitchen to share his feedback. And that's when he found out that the rice he was served was stale. Yuck. It looks older than fucking me. At around the same time, Yolanda and Patty informed Chef Ramsay that they funded the business, but Vic ran it. Or, as they put it, he ruined it. You two pay for the business, this man runs it. <laughs> Ruins it, runs it. <laughs> While discussing the finances, the owners revealed that they needed $22,000 every week to break even, but the restaurant only made a third of that. 22 grand a week. We do a third of that. After only 18 months of operation, they were losing half a million dollars annually and owed $850,000. You're losing half a million dollars a year. What's the debt? 850. And you've only been open for 18 months. Chef Ramsay stayed back for the dinner service and the place was packed. He met with Chef Ambrosio and was taken aback by how large the kitchen was. Wow, look at the size of this kitchen. Ambrosio. While Vic talked very highly about his food, the customers on the other hand didn't feel the same. Check this out. These chips are cardboard. The cases have no taste whatsoever. Things only got worse from here. Chef Ramsay was disgusted when he saw what they did with the returned food. What's wrong with those chips? I take only one if you say that it's a little crispy. So you take them from the table back into the drawer. Ugh, did they really just dump all of those chips into the drawer with the new ones? That's so unhygienic. Later, he finds out that the food was prepared the previous day. When Chef Ramsay pressed the staff even more about this, he discovered that it was actually prepared the previous week. When were these done? Yesterday. Then also this one for last week. They even had things that dated back way further. Like five month old chives, some sticky curled up fish, and oxidized steak wrapped in tin foil. But what in the hell is this thing? Look at the color of it. It's oxidized. That's poor. What have we done to it? Why is it all stuck in there with blood at the bottom of the tray? A hungry cat would walk away from that. Chef Ramsay discovered more improperly cooked and stored food in the refrigerator as customers started piling into the dining room. Not only did they have a ton of undated pre-made meals, but they also had a huge container of refried beans. Ground beef! Half of it's fucking fat, you idiot! It's fatter than you! The famous chef was appalled to see so much stale food in one place. Fed up with what he was seeing, the famous chef went up to Vic and told him this. You're overstaffed, underworked, shit food. I wouldn't trust you running a bar, let alone a fucking restaurant. You must be out of your tiny mind. Chef Ramsay asked Vic to show the beans to the diners, but Vic refused to do so. I want to take that out there. That's embarrassing. However, Chef Ramsay had to do something about it. So he barged out of the kitchen with a huge sack of beans, then shut the place down immediately. But we're stopping service. Everything you've had to drink, eat so far is all on the house. When he told the customers to check the bucket before leaving, you won't believe how they reacted. Oh my god, that's a garbage bucket. While the famous chef spent some time with Yolanda, Vic realized that she was torn between her marriage and her daughter. She even went as far as to tell him that they couldn't be together anymore. No, before you came here, I said, if this doesn't work, I don't think you and I could be together anymore. But that wasn't the end of the family drama. Don, Patty's husband, showed up with his own set of problems. Things escalated quickly, and Chef Ramsay had to do something about it before things got physical. He immediately did this to break up the fight. Relax, it's done, relax, relax. Pal. Outside, 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 outside. Let's go, let's go. Can't say that. With that sorted out, Chef Ramsay then came across this. What in the fuck is that? But the staff decided to proceed with the next service without Chef Ramsay's approval. They tried to serve the overcooked rice before he arrived, but failed. Yolanda, you cook at home, don't you? Yes. What's wrong with this? Overcooked. Absolutely right. It's mush. The chefs were unable to properly prepare the rice, so Yolanda jumped in to do it. Considering the fact that there was so much mismanagement, they hardly made any money from that service. The next day, Ramsay returned with a famous Mexican chef named Julieta Balesteros. Soon after, with her help, the restaurant underwent a massive makeover. Oh my god! Come through, come through, come through. Now, look at it. On the night of the relaunch, things started off great, but that was until the food was returned and the chefs began to scramble in the kitchen. Julieta. What happened? They said it's cold. This time, they were burning their nachos. Something's burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They burned the nachos. They burned the nachos? What's going on, guys, please? How the fuck do we burn nachos? 
For the rest of the night though, everything seemed to go smoothly. I like this. It has a nice texture. Thank you. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy. For the first time, I see the people, they're smiling. They're talking good things about the restaurant, especially about the food. It's a good piece of chicken. I really like the cafeteria. This is delicious. Oh, Thank you very much. But guess who made an entry? The mayor. That definitely added a lot of pressure. Thankfully though, the mayor declared that the food was wonderful and promised to return. It was excellent food. We had a great evening tonight. I would absolutely come here again. Vic, who finally won Chef Ramsay over, was taken outside and shown the building's new sign. Oh <laughs> wow, that's quite a difference, isn't it? With so many changes made, Fiesta Sunrise was finally on the right path. But sadly, among all the restaurants on Kitchen Nightmares, Fiesta Sunrise has one of the shortest updates. There isn't really much to report on since Fiesta Sunrise closed down before the episode even aired. To be a bit more specific, in September of 2008, the restaurant met its end. Since they failed to pay some taxes they owed, the establishment was seized. This wasn't the first time though since this also happened in 2007. They really should have learned their lesson the first time since they paid their debts in full and were able to reopen. Other than the fact that Fiesta Sunrise was massively in debt, there was also a recession at the time so they were screwed. To make matters even worse, a stabbing occurred just outside the restaurant so that didn't exactly help either. So this restaurant was destined to fail due to its filthy kitchen, refusal to pay taxes, and you know, people getting stabbed. Google Maps' recent photos reveal that the building is boarded up and empty. On November 13th of 2008, viewers tuned in to watch Chef Ramsay say Fiesta Sunrise, which had already shut down. For some context, the episode was shot in February of 2008. Anyway, poor Patty, who was robbed of tons of money, appears to be involved with a restaurant called Fiesta Mexico in Orangeburg, New York. It's run by the Flores family, who have been managing it since September of 2020. Very recently this year, a business called Durant Rentals, a construction rental company, took over the old Fiesta building. Now, even though Gordon Ramsay wasn't successful with this rescue, you've successfully watched this entire video. Since you came all this way, why not drop a like, comment, and share? And if you somehow didn't already, subscribe for more. Do you know any other Kitchen Nightmares restaurants that were closed before their episodes even aired? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching guys!